Hi, this is Mike Smith, and welcome back to my video for an introduction to interactive programming in Python. This is a little bonus video on doing some animations while displaying pictures. This is a different type of animation than what they'll be doing in week 8. In week 8, it's they're doing sprite animation. This here is just doing a little bit of animation in the code itself. This code here is the same code I had in the previous video. I've added just a couple little things to it, which I'll show you here. I have a Boolean variable here said, called animating, which just says whether the current image is in animation or not. I have a variable called animation steps, which I can set to how many steps I want in the animation. I have a list of different types of animations. I have the current animation step, which starts off at zero, and the current animation, which is going to default to the fly in the top and the first one. Also, down here in the timer handler, I've added a couple of things. I have animating equals true when the timer starts. I set animating equals true, so it'll start animating the display of the picture. And then I have a variable here, animation equals animation zero, so it chooses the first one. Later on we'll randomize it, but for now we'll just do the first one. So in the globals here we also need to add animating and animation. and we'll need a function to do our animations. So we'll put in these couple of functions here. This here is just a Pythagorean theorem function, which we'll use later. We're not going to use it for this current one. So animate is going to take the canvas. It's going to take the image center and what type of animation it has to do. And it needs globals of animating, so when it's done the animation it can change animating to false. It needs animation steps so it can keep track of what step in the animation it is. And it also needs canvas location and canvas image size so it can change those depending on the animation where we want to display the image. So first thing we do is we increase the animation step by one. And then we check to see if the animation step is greater than the total animation steps. If it is, we ch change animating to false to turn off the animation set animation step back to zero and then draw the image using its current variables and then we just return. Now here I have a couple of variables set up. One's called ratio which just takes the animation step divided by the animation steps and the other one is just the inverse of that. That's why it's called INV ratio, inverse ratio. So our first animation is flying from top, so we do if animation equals flying from top, then all we're going to do is we're going to bring the image in from the top, so all we have to do to do that is to change its current location over time. So the X location isn't going to same change, but the Y location is going to change. So we just subtract from the Y location part of the final Y location using the inverse ratio that we calculated above here, and then draw the image. So one more thing we need to do is in the draw handler. So in the draw handler here, we're just going to put in an if statement. If animating, call our animation function, else, just draw the picture. Okay, let's run that. And you see that we have pictures flying in from the top now. And again, since we didn't change any other code, they're still displaying at different sizes and their final location are still in different locations. And the final location does stay fully on the screen because we already took care of that previously. Okay, so let's add some more animations. So 
So back up here in our animation function, we're going to add three more for now because they're fairly similar to what we just had. This one's flying from the bottom, this one's flying from the left, and this one's flying from the right. And as you can see here, they're all basically the same. Uh, flying from the bottom, instead of doing a minus, we do a plus. And then flying from the left, instead of doing our calculation on the y, we're doing our calculation on the x. And then in the right, we're doing a plus instead of the minus from the left. So we'll go down here and we'll test them. We'll change that to number one. That should give us ones from the bottom. The first one still goes from the top because that's our default before we actually call our function. But the rest come in from the bottom now. And if we change this to two, they'll come in from the left. And if we change this to three, they'll come in from the right. So that's four different animations with not too much code. And there's not really a whole lot to do it. All we're doing is changing location over time. Okay, let's add some more animations. These next two are called split center vertically and split center horizontally. And basically all they're going to do is start drawing the images from the outside in. And this illusion is created simply by displaying the image and then drawing a thick black line over it. That thick black line will just get smaller as each step of the animation progresses. And we just do that in here by changing the thickness of the line using ratio. And we have to add one to it because we're doing the image size minus the image size times the ratio. Now if that ratio happens to be one, then we're going to subtract this from this, which is going to be the same number and we'll get zero, which if we try to draw a line at zero gives us an error, so we need to add one to it to make sure it's always at least one. Okay, so we'll go down here and we'll try out number four. And we have a neat little animation where it gradually displays the picture from the outside in. And if we change this to 5, then we'll have basically the same thing, only going in the other direction. Okay, we'll go back up here to our timer handler. And we'll add more animation. Okay, this one here is going to be a circle animation. It's called circle. And that's why I have the helper function up top, which is Pythag, which we're just going to calculate a radius, which is going to be the half the x and half the y dimensions of the image. And then we'll add one to it so that the radius of the circle will be at least as big as the image in both directions. And again, we'll draw the image, and then we're just going to draw that black circle over top of the image and gradually reduce the size of it. So we'll go down here, change this to number six. And again, another very simple animation. It looks interesting. A lot of people could think it's very complicated to do, but it really isn't. Okay, one more animation. Back up here in our animation function, we're going to add one more, and this one's called Grow and Turn. And basically what's going to happen is the image is just going to start off small, and it's going to grow at each step, and it's also going to rotate at each step. Again, this is fairly simple. We're just going to draw the image 
using its current ratio for this x and the y. And then we're going to rotate the image based on the ratio again as well. And then here we just draw the image with its current rotation, which is an optional argument for draw image. So we'll go down here, change this to 7, and we have a neat little animation where the picture spins onto the screen. So one last thing, we're going to go down here, comment this line out, add this line in, so we'll have random animations for each image, and we'll run it again. So now as each image goes through it, it comes through with a different animation for each image. Looks really cool and really complicated, but as you can see from the code, it really isn't. We're actually at a hundred lines with blank lines and a couple of comments. So something that looks like it could be very complicated actually isn't, and it is using only stuff that we have learned in the class so far. So just from what we've learned so far, if you use a little bit of imagination, you can do all kinds of interesting things, and this is just one example of that. I hope you enjoyed this, and hopefully you can come up with some interesting things to do yourself. Thank you.